that they were going to be doing the Q button replacement on an XDJ1000 MK2. This process is going to be very similar for the other CDJs and XDJs, but they will have some different components as far as the chipsets go, but the actual tax switches and LEDs for the most part are the same. But anyways, quickly kind of show off this mod real quick. Um, uh, let it spool up here, but this is the blackout kit. So basically it would basically blah, blah, would get you replacement knobs, um, getting rid of the silver ones and then your silver stock buttons as well, replaces them with some black ones. And then in addition to that, uh, I could replace the LEDs for you in your play and cue button so that you can use something that you'd like as far as a better color goes. Um, so let's just get a cup. So nice, we've got the same color scheme going on the left and right side. Um, super happy with how that turned out, but realistically I can give you any color as far as other options you can get RGB flashing slow and fast but anyways let's get started on this um, actually before I do that uh, pricing on this I think it's gonna be about 50 bucks for all the parts and to do the LEDs on that but if you want it with a complete board so I can just send it to you or it's just this and it's already modified if you need new switches this might be a good chance to do it it's probably gonna be about a hundred bucks um, that's just with the part cost from Pioneer um, these are actually some pretty like these are 30 to 50 bucks this is around 30 to 50 bucks as well so and then that doesn't even include the switch there or the selector so anyways let's get back to it let's show you how it's done um, just a little heads up I do have some of the screws removed for this for the sake of timing um, so on the back side here there's going to be three black screws you're going to want to remove those they have white arrows next to them and then on the underside there's going to be four screws uh, silver these guys um, and those are going to be on the let's see here the outside here one here and one here if you can't get to them because your screwdriver or whatever you're using doesn't reach you can remove these feet but you do have to add that into your process then it takes a little bit of extra time so anyways, those are removed. We're gonna flip it back over to the top side. And we're going to open it to the left, like a book. All right, get that out of the way. So now there is this bar right here, locking the actual uh, ribbon cable in there. As you can see, this one's already been kinked from someone else being in here, but I did know that because I made some repairs on it. So you're going to remove that lock by pulling it up, there we go, and then it pops out nice and easy. Cool. So uh, let's get to the Q button. So get that set up nice and easy there. Alright, so there are six screws holding this Q button in, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all that's retaining it there. So let's get those removed so you can see what's going on inside. All right, so there is one more mod inside here that I'm still working on. It will be available in my band camp. Uh, the goal behind this is basically to help people out that's going to uh, fix or, well, correct the ones that they have that are broken and then hopefully prevent uh, new ones from breaking further um, so we'll get into that in a second here so to remove this you want to pull this lock up and then this wire will just pop right out cool cool so as I noted parts are basically the same this one's out of a 2000 Nexus 1 and this is XDJ 1000 MK2 same tech switches same LEDs not bad at all this one does actually have the search panel up top so it is slightly different so let's quickly get into the mods real quick, um, show off what's going on under the hood. So this is your actual switch panel here, or your plastic portion. This has a mod that I've created where it actually places a bar and a support mechanism to keep it from breaking. And I'll show you exactly how it breaks in a second here, but this is what they look like. I mean, it's just held in by this little flimsy piece of plastic and it's really just not, uh, not doing a whole lot for it but let's get into how that works real quick okay. 
So when you're pressing down on your Q button, you're giving it a lot more mileage than the play button's getting because you're thinking, we'll just say a terrible estimate here, five Q button pushes to every single one of these pushes. But the problem is, is that this button is offset. And with that, you get different loading. So obviously they have to have the LED in the center for lighting purposes. Cool, great, fine. But what happens when this breaks? So the issue that I've seen is that basically when you're pushing on the back side of it, you're going directly into the switch and that's fine. And there's these little support feet on it that it barely uses to actually kind of defend for that. But when you're pushing up top, it gets a lot more flex and that's a lot more of the issue I think because what's happening is you get a fatigue failure up front as you see, like it breaks off right at the joint there. So that basically when you're pushing down, you get it lined up over the button here, you get a lot more of a flex in that plastic and that's where we're seeing that this like failure is coming from, whereas if you're pushing down directly over the button, minuscule movement. It's having all of this free play and extra movement that's really causing it to fail earlier. But again, that's not really something that you have to worry about on the Nexus 2s because it's a whole different button assembly, which I can show in another video. But how does this fix this? Um, so this button frame that I've essentially built here, it minimizes that range of motion. Um, so this one being a good one, not a problem here, we'll just pull that out. So it still allows your normal mo movement, but it prevents it from going further down. So it does give you a little bit of a dead zone at the top, but we do know that that's what's causing the problem. So I'd rather have that than have my button failing. So what this essentially does is then locks your button in. and keeps it from wiggling around. Actually, I'll wait until after we do the test there. So a lot less movement there. So what does that look like when it's failed? You can actually check your XDJs. Let's do that real quick so I can show you what it looks like when it's failed. So this one actually, we can maybe get lucky, we'll see. Uh, it will move enough that you can get it stuck. Yep. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, boo. All right, let's get that mod in there real quick. So again, this mod is in still the testing phases. It's not like I have a fleet of uh, DJs waiting to put down miles on these parts. So I can't really offer any guarantee with this, but I can tell you that it will fix the wobble issue. So if you do have broken ones, this would be a lot cheaper than replacing it completely just because of how much they cost. So. So it forces it to stay straight. Noticeably less movement, it still works. Cool. All right, so that's how you remove and replace your Q button. I'm gonna do a part two here that I'll make in a separate video just so you guys understand how the actual uh, soldering process goes. But for now, let's get this back together. All right, so to get this reassembled, you're going to put the the red wire by the bar there. It's got one through seven, those are the pins. Lock that down. Place that back in. Get 
Get your screws in there, all six of them. Now you know make sure that lock is up. Then press it down once you have the cable seated. Cool. So now that that's back in there, close it up. It should just drop right down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling. Yeah, like this one's not. Come on. So it can usually be attributed to this wire right here that's getting in the way. So I just got to make sure it runs down that side next to that little metal cage. There we go. Drops right in there. Power it up. Make sure it's good. Oh, spill. Cool, cool. Good play, or good cue, good play. All right, cool. All right, check out that other video if you want to learn how to solder a little bit more. Um, figured I'd break it up into two parts because I know some people are just looking to replace the assembly and don't even want to touch solder or just are replacing the buttons. All right, see you guys there.